Okay, remote point connections. Um, to visualize them beforehand uh, was was actually quite tricky. You could, in the past, you could actually visualize those spiderweb connections after you've done the analysis. But now you can also do that before you do your analysis. And the way to do that, you go to the display, and then there's a remote point connection tab here. And that just allows you to, to show that, that visual spiderweb. Now, remember, internally, these again are multi-point constraints. So they are relations between degrees of freedom. Uh, but we often visualize that through this spiderweb so that we can see, oh yeah, this center point where we apply the remote force is linked to our application region, these, these edges of the holes. So basically, the behavior of the center point is now linked to the behavior of the edges. And it depends again if you use rigid or deformable. So if you use rigid behavior, it the whole thing basically uh, behaves like a rigid body, uh, where the CG determines the motion. And when you select the formable, then I always see that that the motion of these uh, dependable points, uh, of these points on the edges, which then become independent, is the average motion of the dependent point in the middle. And you just use it for load transfer. Okay, sorry, that was <laughs> quite an explanation, but basically you can visualize those spider webs now before you do your analysis. And that's um, for any type of remote definition, so remote connection, remote point, remote force, but also springs and beams, which again are idealized type of connections, uh, which also use the multipoint constraint in the, in the background. Right, mesh translucency. Um, yes, there's an option now in, again, mechanical graphics to change the transparency of your mesh. So that allows you to look through the mesh and um, yeah, may uh, be interesting to create better type of uh, views. Okay, contacts. Okay, we, ha we have had uh, the option to to include beam to beam contacts and beam to shell contacts uh, for, for many versions now. Uh, but that they've just added some improvements here. So for instance, if you look at the picture on the left, uh, if the mesh of the beam is relatively coarse uh, with respect to the mesh of the shell, you can easily end up with an, uh, a penetration there uh, because the existing nodal detection option misses the contact surface. But now there's a new algorithm called projected contact, and that enforces the contact constraint on an overlapping region uh, rather than just looking at individual contacting nodes. So it's more accurate, and uh, it again works with beam to shells, uh, beam to beams. Here you see again a an, an, um, an video of that contact that works really well, it's very smooth and accurate. Right, then another improvement in context, or an, basically another feature here. Um, if you combine wear uh, with um, adaptive meshing, it's, um, yeah, it, it basically uh, yeah, it has been improved now, and um, it's, uh, it morphs it much better. Yeah. So you use nonlinear adaptive type of meshing, for the hexa elements here that undergo large contact surface wear and it's automatically now smoothened so that yeah you can basically combine it together.